Hi everyone, I'm Elisabetta Fersini and I'm going to present a joint work with Justin Armanini and Michael Dintorni, uh, two students uh, working in my research lab. And I'm going to present our uh, proposal, our approach for profiling fake news spreaders, in particular a system that exploits stylometry, personality, emotions and embeddings. As we know, the problem of fake news and rumor detection has gained a lot of attention during the last years. Because if users get their own news from social media, they could encounter the risk of being exposed to false or misleading uh, information. In order to uh, provide, provide uh, some mechanism in, for, um, let's say, fighting this type of uh, misinformation, uh, one potential solution is related to the annual detection of uh, those people that online uh, are mainly aimed at spreading uh, these false uh, contents. In, in this talk, we are going to present the, our proposed system that aims at distinguishing authors that have shared some fake news in the past from those that have never done it by characterizing each user according to the following set of features. Our system in particular is based is a supervised system that is based on creating a representation of the uh, authors uh, of the spreaders of fake news by using uh, four different types of characteristics. In particular, each user is represented by exploiting, uh, first of all, a set of features uh, related to stylometry, in particular for capturing the writing style of a user in order to um, reveal if it is mainly inclined to fake or real contents. Then we decided to exploit also uh, one specific characteristic related to personality. And this is because we want to try to model the behavior of a user in social media because we want to validate the hypothesis if there is a, any given personality trait that could be more inclined to um, share fake contents uh, uh, with respect to the real ones. Another set of features that we decided to exploit for creating the representation of a user is mainly related to emotion. In particular, uh, we argue uh, that capturing the emotion can be more can be um, an indication of um, the attitude um, of providing affective contents mainly related to fake news while uh, the emotions are less related to contents that are uh, real ones. Uh, the final set of features that we decided to exploit in our approach is mainly concerned with embeddings. In particular, we uh, argue that fake news spreaders should be more inclined to share some specific topic of interest uh, and for these reasons, if we are able to capture the similarity, the semantic similarity between content, probably we could be uh, more precise for detecting those contents that are similarly uh, related to a fake content. The first set of characteristics that we decided to exploit is mainly related to the stylometric features. In particular, we argue that uh, characterizing the writing style of the, of the users could help in distinguishing the behavior uh, of uh, uh, the writings related to the writing style of the fake news spreaders and the real sp uh, news spreaders. In particular, we decided to evaluate, to measure um, some statistics related to the usage of the language, related to the part of speech and the punctuation marks for uh, highlighting the differences uh, for, the two di for two potential distinct uh, writing styles. Concerning the usage of the language, we defined some statistics about the length of the sentences, the number of uh, characters that composed the, um, the words, uh, the frequency of the emoji and the frequency of the offensive words, uh, and so on and so forth. Regarding the part of speech, we measure the frequency of the most common elements that we have in the part of speech of the two languages, English and Spanish, and finally, for the usage of the punctuation mark, 
we evaluated again the, the frequency of, of using some specific punctuation marks for capturing the difference between the two writing styles. The second characteristic that we decided to monitor for distinguishing between fake news spreaders and real news spreaders um, is mainly related to the personality traits. In order to validate the hypothesis that, that some personality traits are more keen to spread fake news than others, we exploited a model based on the Mayer Briggs type indicator, so the, the well known MBTI. And this model has been used to predict the personality, of a, uh, the personality type of a given user, in particular by distinguishing uh, 16 personality types by using a four axis model that compares uh, uh, different types of dichotomies. For example, it compares introversion versus extroversion, intuition versus sensing, thinking versus feeling, and judging versus perceiving. The choice of this model has been motivated by the hypothesis that real news spreaders should be more likely uh, belong to the type of thinking and judging for being more predisposed to reasoning and accurate decision making. On the other hand, we also argue that fake news spreaders should have a personality type more close to uh, extroversion or feeling for being more inclined to act according to their feelings. In order to detect the personality type of each user, we adopted the, 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 the test, the MTBI personality classification system that takes the social media posts of a given user as input and produces as output a prediction of the author's personality type. In order to accomplish this task, that has been performed only for the English language because this model is not available for the Spanish language, we exploited a supervised model that is based on two main components. A first component that is aimed at um, processing the Twitter feeds uh, posted by the user and a, a second component that is mainly uh, concerned with the training and difference uh, um, uh, mechanisms uh, based on naive bias for predicting the personality of a given uh, user uh, by exploiting uh, um, the set of posts that he or she provided. The third component of our feature vector related to the authors uh, that could be characterized, that, that could be distinguished as a fake news spreader or real news spreader is mainly related to the uh, emotion features. In particular, uh, we argue that extracting the emotion-related feature for each user, uh, it could be really important for characterizing its profile. In order to characterize the uh, emotional profile of a user, we exploited the, the NRC emotional lexicon, uh, which is composed um, of a set of uh, uh, words associated with um, eight specific emotions uh, according to the Placic theory of emotion. In particular, uh, the, um, for each user, we decided to quantify the level of anger, fear, expectation, uh, trust, surprise, sadness, joy and disgust emotions for um, providing some insight about its uh, entire emotional profile. Uh, the lexicon that we adopted is composed of more or less uh, 40,000 uh, words and uh, this lexicon uh, we recall that has been created according to a crowdsourcing platform um, by the uh, colleague uh, Mohamed Saif and Peter Turney. Uh, the last element that we consider in our uh, characterization of the user is mainly related to the user content embeddings. Uh, the hypothesis is that some aspect of a similar fake news could be uh, expressed in a similar way from a semantic point of view, even if the two different posts could be written in a different way from a lexicographic perspective. Uh, in order to capture the semantic similarity of fake news spreaders, each user has been represented by using a uh, 512 uh, dimensional vector uh, that is derived by a member wise mean aggregation uh, function on its tweet, on the tweet given by uh, a specific user, uh, by exploiting the embedding techniques 
uh, um, defined by the universal sentence encoder and in particular by the multilingual universal sentence encoder provided by Google. This choice of exploiting the multilingual uh, encoder is motivated by the fact that we want to capture some commonalities between languages, so between English and Spanish. So concerning the results, once we have uh, derived our uh, feature vector for each uh, user in our corpus, we train a support vector machines uh, using the training data and then we provided the prediction using the, the, the train model on the test set. In order to understand the behavior of our proposed approach, we analyzed the performance not only for the challenge, but also for using a tenfold cross-validation approach. Uh, by looking at the results, so performing the tenfold cross-validation, we have noticed, and, lo and looking at the results, we noticed that the features related to stylometry, emotions, and embeddings contribute more to the recognition capabilities than the personality one. And this um, fault uh, about related to the personality trait could be mainly due to the inefficacy of the adopted model for really capturing the personality traits of a user given their treated fields. Another interesting insight that we gained from the tenfold cross-validation uh, investigation is mainly related to the re relative contribution given by the stylometric characteristic to the final results. We noticed that the, these features related to the stylo stylometry uh, contributed to obtain a 5% of improvement of the accuracy with respect to the use only with respect to use only emotions and embeddings. And these tell us that this set of characteristics could help to better distinguish uh, between fake and non-fake fake writing styles. Concerning the challenge, we obtained, uh, let's say, for, uh, since this is our first tentative in, in a challenge related to the, to the a set of, related to the author profile problem, we obtained some uh, not so bad results. Uh, we uh, achieved an accuracy of 60% for the English language and 72% for the Spanish one. With this last slide, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please send me an email.